Good afternoon. I am Carol Strohecker, Dean of the College of Design, and I'd like to welcome you to the college's 2019 commencement ceremony. Now, if you would, please join me in singing two verses of Hail Minnesota, led by University of Minnesota student Kate Lamb. The words are printed on the inside cover of your program.
Thank you, Kate, for making us all sound so good. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our ceremony today and to welcome to the stage University Regent David J. McMillan and Vice Provost and Dean of Undergraduate Education, Robert McMaster. I also want to welcome my faculty colleagues, almost 50 of whom have joined us for this, our 13th graduation ceremony as the College of Design. Let me welcome as well our college's deans, Marilyn DeLong, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Abimbolo Asojo, Associate Dean for Research, Creative Scholarship and Engagement, and Trevor Miller, Assistant Dean for Strategy and Advancement, as well as Department Head Joe Favor of the Department of Landscape Architecture. It's wonderful that so many students have joined us to celebrate this important event as we send off the College of Design's newest graduates. I extend warm thanks to the 30 staff members and volunteers who have helped to make this vibrant commencement ceremony possible. The colorful array of academic regalia you see before you is laden with symbolism. Our, our procession began with the university mace carried by John Cunningham, an esteemed alumnus who is also a gold medalist of the American Institute of Architects, Minnesota. The mace is a centuries old symbol that has evolved from being associated with war to representing peaceful leadership. This is a fitting symbol for the knowledge we seek and the wisdom we endeavor to cultivate through higher education. The original university mace was crowned by a star, the Star of the North, which we just celebrated through song. For eons, the northern star, Polaris, has served as a navigation aid. It is used in the charting of navigational maps and in measuring astronomical latitude. Also known as the star of direction, it is both beacon and guide, literally as people use the star to find their way and figuratively as people reference it in the lifelong quest to realize our full potential. The North Star is a time-honored symbol of inspiration and hope, a beacon and guide as we strive toward great achievements while being kind-hearted and generous. Further symbolism abounds in the academic regalia, in the garments of those assembled on stage. Each color and form has its reason, defined by a code that has been evolving for hundreds of years. The academic costume code specifies the color of the gown, whether it is worn open or closed, whether the ends of the sleeves are pointed or square, and how many bands adorn them. These attributes are clues to the academic institution that bestowed the credential, the wearer's field of study, and the investment of time in doing so, which signals the level of commitment and resulting depth of expertise. Like the gown, the hood is symbolic. The higher the academic degree, the longer the hood. Its trim represents the wearer's academic discipline. The cap may be a mortar board or tam. The color and position of the tassel are also meaningful. Its color may indicate the wearer's university, academic discipline, degree, or membership in an honor society. Moving the tassel signals the crossing of a threshold, the reason we are celebrating today. At the end of this ceremony, after you have received the document representing successful completion of your studies, you may move the tassel to the other side of your cap. Such symbolic manifestations of ideas are familiar to us as designers. We imbue things we create with ideas that inspire them by representing the ideas through perceivable attributes such as color and form. These perceptible signals are the vehicles through which people can share experiences and make meaning together and for themselves. Representation is something that all of our academic disciplines have in common. 
We may be designing a garment or other pervade product, a message to disseminate through print or online, a building or its interior, its surrounding landscape, its infrastructure or community supports. We may be designing a system that enables people to deliver health care or some other value. We may offer contextualizing history or advice for distributing the things we design. In all of these design-related efforts, we consider how to re represent ideas that guide creation of the entity, indicate its potential, and communicate its use. As human society becomes increasingly global and impacts to our built and natural environments reach planetary scale, we are realizing that progress, even survival, will depend on ideas and expertise from multiple disciplines working together. Policymakers need to work with landscapers, engineers need to work with anthropologists and biologists. Many of our students are recognizing the need for multidisciplinary approaches, so pursue double majors and collaborate with others who have complementary expertise. The academic costume code may have to catch up. Currently, it prohibits colors of the hood from being combined so as to represent more than one academic field. Moving forward, designers of academic gowns will find the need to mix and match. A few minutes ago, we sang the university's version of Hail Minnesota, the state song. That song extols nature, the stream that bends to sea, the pine that seeks the blue, woods and waters fair, prairies waving far, all hailing thee, their northern star. College of Design graduates, as you go forward to pursue your hopes and aims, Please be mindful of this natural beauty and the values represented through our song. As you select materials, consider the entire supply chain. Think about the full life cycle of things designed and manufactured. These considerations will add value to the things you create. People will want those things because of the values you imbue. Please do not pollute, do not exploit, do not harm. Think about the lasting value of the things you create. And please come back to share your experiences. Remember that you belong here. We will always think of you as members of the CDES community. Now I'd like to welcome a graduate of a former incarnation of the college who has come back to celebrate with us as today's commencement speaker. Tamara Eagle Bull is the co-founder of Encompass Architects, headquartered in Lincoln, Nebraska. She received her Master of Architecture degree from the University of Minnesota and is recognized as the first Native American woman to be licensed in the United States. Tammy is also an enro enrolled member of the Oglala Lakota Nation and has the distinction of being the recipient of the American Institute of Architects 2019 Whitney M. Young Jr. Award for embodying social responsibility. Please join me in welcoming Tammy. Greeting friends, I greet you with a good heart and a warm handshake. Congratulations to the University of Minnesota College of Design Class of 2019. Today we honor you and your hard work and academic success. I am honored to join Regent McMillan, Dean Strohecker, Associate Deans DeLong and Asojo, Assistant Dean Miller, Mace Bearer John Cunningham, distinguished faculty and staff, and proud parents, family, and friends today to watch you take this important step in your careers and lives. You did it. Your, the long hours, sleepless nights, stress-filled days of academia will now be long hours, sleepless nights, stress-filled days of adulthood. <laughs> As I look out at you, I am encouraged by the diversity of the faces I see. I was recently honored by the AIA with the Whitney M. Young Jr. Award. 
Fifty years ago in Portland, Oregon, Mr. Young spoke at the AIA convention. He told the architects, you are not a profession that has distinguished itself by your social and civic contributions to the cause of civic rights. And I am sure this has not come to you as a, any shock. You are most distinguished by your thunderous silence and your complete irrelevance. Wow, all right? So that was kind of a call to the, to the profession. This speech was given at a time in our history where social justice and civil rights were at the forefront of American life. In 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. Cesar Chavez held a 25-day hunger strike in support of migrant farm workers. You might know all that, even if most of you were not even alive then. What you may not know is that in that same year, here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the American Indian Movement was, was forming. In the 50 years since then, many steps have been taken towards a more diverse profession, but has it been enough? Currently, among the AIA members, only a 9% identify as minority. Architecture is consistently in the top five least diverse professions. The American Society of Landscape Architects in a 2014 survey of graduating students show 30% as minorities, which is an increase of 12% over two years. In the Inter International Interior Design Association, IIDA, in a 2016 survey, despite 69% of the industry being female, only 25% of those of the top positions in firms were female. So things have changed, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Paths blazed by those who came before have made the journey not only possible for the increasing number of diverse students, but have made the journey a bit smoother. In 1958, in a small reservation town in South Dakota, a young high school graduate wished to fulfill his father's dream of his boy becoming an architect. He went to his guidance counselor at school. Now this was a time when racism against Native Americans was unabashed and pretty much the norm in South Dakota. This guidance counselor was a non-Native person who had his own biases. He told the student, who was to eventually become my father, that it was not possible for him to become an architect. Not because of his grades, because he was valedictorian of his class, not because he didn't have the artistic talent, the student was well known for his drawing skills, but because of his race. The counselor simply told him, Native Americans cannot become architects. The best you can hope to be is a teacher, and for women, a nurse. Now those are admirable professions and my dad did go on to become a teacher and eventually worked for the government and, and helped countless native students pursue higher education. But he did regret listening to that counselor. So as I stand here and look at you, two generations removed from my dad, as the first native woman in the architectural profession, I am encouraged that those arbitrary limitations based on race are for the most part gone. You are joining design professions that can truly affect people's everyday lives and quality of existence. Design has the power to make a real difference in many ways. My own path has led me to working across the country searching for a way home, a way to help Native people. I realize that through providing underserved people with a real opportunity to be involved in the design of their built environment, they could have a positive role in the design of their lives. Whether you are an architect, a product designer, a fashion designer, interior designer, landscape architect, or graphic designer, you will influence people with your work. As designers, we don't just problem solve, we design solutions. In designing those solutions, we should strive to make a positive impact. My path finally led me to start a firm and began working directly with tribal nations across the United States. I am able to see how an interna interactive design process benefits Native American communities by giving them a sense of ownership in their environment. For so long, things have happened to Natives. I wanted things to happen by Natives. We were fortunate to be selected to design a K-8 school in Porcupine, South Dakota on the, Por on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in 2005. This is the community that my mom is from and where I spent my summers when I was growing up. I spent a lot of time there with my grandparents. This is where I consider home. So we designed this school and involved not only the teachers and the administration, but we, had, we involved the parents and the students. 
we had a workshop with the students and asked them what they wanted in their school and what the school meant to them. The responses we received ranged from what you would expect of kids of this age to the very insightful. We heard from an overwhelming number of students that they needed the school to be a safe place for them. The Pine Ridge Indian Reservation has an amazing culture and beauty, but it also has a population mired in poverty and addiction. These students were living this life every day. School was the place where they could count on a hot meal or two, could rely on the kindness of their teachers, and could be safe for a few hours of the day. So when we reached out to these children and asked their opinion, give, gave them a voice for the most important thing to happen in the community in 50 years, it showed them that they mattered. So fast forward to after the school has been functional for nearly 10 years now. The students we worked with have aged out of this school. I went back with a documentary film crew who was doing a documentary on indigenous architects last year. Now the students who are there now were not even born when we, when we designed the school in 2005. These students were now coming up to us and explaining the school to me, telling me about the big design concepts in the school. So the interactive design process that we used has somehow become part of the institutional memory of this school. In a community where vandalism and graffiti is rampant, this school is the one building that has not had one incident of vandalism in 14 years since it's been opened. I was recently speaking at a gathering of Native American youth in Nebraska and telling that story. And one of the high school age attendees raised his hand and said he was one of those students that we worked with. He came to that workshop and he remembered drawing a picture for us. So he, now he is seriously contemplating going into architecture because of his experience on that project. That's a win for me. There was a time when designers' main goal was the pursuit of awards. We measured success by the number of awards on our walls. I challenge you to measure the success of your career not by trophies or accolades, but by the positive influence you inspire, by the satisfied and happy clients that you work with, by the impact you make in a community, in a family, in a person. Look for ways to be catalysts for change, catalysts for improvement, catalysts for positivity. Encourage each other. Our professions rely on competition as a marketing strategies. This breeds self-interest and the need for awards. Look for opportunities to lift each other up. And when competition for a project is necessary, do it with respect for each other and respect for your profession. As designers, we have an opportunity to leave a tangible legacy, a building, a product design, a clothing design. And that's awesome. What we also need to leave is a legacy for positive change, doing something good for the people we serve. Our professions are service professions. So when in that service, make a positive impact in all design solutions. Don't do this for the awards. Those will come. But do it because you can make a difference through design. Congratulations again. Plamia. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Every year at commencement, we ask some graduating students to address their classmates, knowing that education occurs not just in the classroom alchemy between professors and students, but also in the myriad informal settings of college life among peers. This year, graduating students in the class of 2019 chose three fellow students as representatives. Our first speaker is Lauren Bairns. Our next speaker is Yuan Juyong. And our final speaker is Ivan Gill. Eight weeks ago, while on my final college spring break with my family, I emphatically announced to my parents and grandparents that I would not be walking at my college graduation in May. I didn't want to wear a cap and gown and get my picture taken and celebrate with my friends and family because I knew that if I did all those things, I'd probably have to reflect on the years that have led me to this very moment. And to be honest, these last few years have been really hard. For some of us, our struggles were late nights in the library and studio, exhaustion after a difficult midterms week, enduring group projects, juggling two jobs while taking five classes, or even just finding a job after graduation. If your time here was anything like mine, 
you faced much more complex challenges outside of the classroom. Maybe you were hit with diagnosis after diagnosis, disorder, disease, or disability until your health seemed to slip away from you. Maybe you dealt with the loss of family, a friendship, or relationship. Maybe you were constantly stressed about finances. Maybe you struggled with your identity and finding your purpose. Maybe you were helplessly homesick. Maybe you never envisioned yourself here today because these personal struggles seemed impossible to overcome. But if I've learned anything during my time here, it's that the word impossible is really frowned upon in the College of Design. For example, in Professor Hokinson's creative problem solving class, he'd stand in front of the class, hold up a simple rubber band and say, think of as many uses as possible for this rubber band. And you'd write furiously, thinking of absolutely absurd ways to utilize a rubber band. And at the end of the exercise, you'd realize that no matter how weird or improbable or unrealistic your ideas were, they weren't technically impossible. Looking back on all the classes I've taken, I can see that the value of the College of Design's education extends beyond teaching us how to think. It encourages us to acknowledge that we have a choice of what to think about. As creative thinkers, the struggles that we faced were not impossible to overcome because they were never perceived as barriers. We employed our skill sets of divergent thinking and an all-encompassing visualization of each problem until it became an inviting opportunity to improve, innovate, and create. I now realize what a tremendous honor it is to share this moment with you right now because I know that I'm surrounded by people who have made the choice to enact positive change in our world through their use of design thinking. Some of us will paint the world a more colorful place. Some of us will design confidence. Some of us will build joy. Some of us will create spaces and products that help others achieve their goals. As creative thinkers, we have the power to create the world that we imagine. So let's envision a more compassionate world. Let's embrace our differences and include them in our solutions. Let's have the courage to fail and learn and grow. Let's let the word impossible ignite our curiosity as we move forward on the road to innovation. We are all here despite our struggles, despite our circumstances, despite our moments of total and absolute defeat. We harness our imaginations, creativity, and grit to design our own unique solutions. We made a choice to see the possibilities. And in doing so, we prove that nothing is truly impossible. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Yuan Zheyang, speaking for architecture graduate students, international students, female students, and the students of color. First of all, please allow me to take a selfie. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Three years ago, after a 14-hour flight, I came to the US alone. I knew nobody, nothing about Minnesota, but a man, a family, my host family, waiting for me for a long time, the Hoobrooks. There are many associations and churches committed to helping international students feel welcomed. This is a huge support for international students. I lived with my host family for a month. During this time, I intensively experienced the beauty of Minnesota and the warmth of Minnesotans. The flavor of homemade banana bread is so familiar to what I had in my hometown. I was surprised to have it on the other side of the world. It was not only the bread, but also the atmosphere of home and the feeling of a city. It was so fast, fantastic, I totally didn't feel isolated, disconnected, or excluded. 
Thanks for all the smiles and the greetings. Thanks to my host family. I love you. I've seen the School of Architecture pursue equity and inclusion as well as my peers. Although bias against gender and race still disenfranchise many people, I feel encouraged to socialize with most people, to speak about unfairness, and to seek help from the school at any time. This made me feel encouraged and free to exchange my ideas with my peers, professors, and mentors outside school. I grew up quite quickly during these three years and changed a lot, from dependence to independence, from individualism to collectivism, from personal perspective to collaboration. One of the most memorable projects is the interdisciplinary studio with landscape students. We four, two architecture students and the two landscape students take turns leading the project. It was an enjoyable design process and we won an Esla Award and a Student Academic Excellence Award. I am proud of us. Thanks to Anna, Shana, and Tyler for your patience and selfless communication. I love you all, my peers. The international collaboration during study abroad and the daily classes rever uh, revealed the University of Minnesota approaching the global engagement. It was a special experience to visit my home country of China as a guest student, and then to introduce the University of Minnesota to visiting Chinese students as a host. This reversal in roles changed my perspective and understanding a lot. I'm willing to take advantage of this experience to further work on global dialogue, both professionally and personally, both between universities and between countries. This relationship is beyond identity, policy, economic strategy, culture, and race. We look forward to a mutually respectful world where everyone can hold different perspectives and speak freely. Thanks for my professors. I love you too. <laughs> Above all, thanks everyone. You made my first experience abroad fascinating at an important stage of my life. My selfie would be nothing without you. Last but not least, we graduate with a better understanding of ourselves. Hillary Clinton said, never doubt that you are valuable and powerful and deserving of every chance and opportunity in the world to pursue and achieve your own dreams. May what you are doing be what you want to do and what you are good at. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, faculty, family, and of course, the very iconic class of 2019. My name is Ivan Gill, and it's an honor for me to be one of tonight's student speakers. Before I get started, I would like to take this moment to give a very special thank you to the faculty for giving me the opportunity to be standing here tonight. As a fellow classmate, I would also like to take this moment to personally congratulate every single one of you for making it till the end, or as I like to call it, the grand finale. This was a very rough journey where we spilled sweat, blood, and tears, literally. But we're only the strongest were able to survive. That's right, you have made it till the end. Congratulations. Tonight is a very special night for all of us as it marks the end of an era and the beginning of the next chapter in our lives. At this moment, it all feels surreal. 
You probably don't know if you want to cry, smile, or laugh. You're wondering whether you're going through a life crisis or if you're just watching the final season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> but don't worry, you will be fine. And within a few days, it would all sink in. Believe me, I know. You see, in the fall of 2010, at the age of 20 years old, I started my college career in the city of Los Angeles. I was a young, gay, Latino boy with a huge dream, attending a super fancy fashion school in the heart of downtown LA, with the hopes of one day making his family very proud. In 2013, I graduated and I obtained an associate's, an associate's degree. There I was the first member of my family to graduate from college in the United States. Proud, young, naive, in-depth, and wondering what was gonna happen next. It wasn't long enough when I realized that life was not going to be as smooth as I imagined it to be. For the next three years, I struggled with my career, my finances, and my living situation. The struggle was so real, but I never gave up. In fact, there were a few times where I did mess up, but I learned from my mistakes. I learned to work my way, and I learned to pay all of my dues. Four years ago, I came to the University of Minnesota with the goal of improving my skills, my knowledge, and completing my education. Ironically, I was declined my entrance, however, with enough perseverance, I was able to get myself in. Coming back to school as an older student had its challenges since most of my classmates were significantly younger than me. And the overall environment was very different to LA. <laughs> Despite all odds, I was able to rise to the occasion throughout my journey and see this. From passing Linda Kruger's color class Yep, you know that. <laughs> to showcasing my senior collection at the Apparel Design Fashion Show. At the same time, being here allowed me to experience things that I never imagined doing, such as becoming the student president of the Design Student and Alumni Board, to designing and presenting wearable technology to NASA, which is something that I am very, very thankful for. Now, I wanted to share my story with you because I want to give you the chance to reflect on your own journey during these past four years and see this. I want you to identify those special and crucial moments that allowed you to shape into the young professional that is graduating tonight. Now, before we leave here, there is one last thing that I want you to know. Life is not going to be easy. For some of you, the journey post-graduation will be smooth. But for others, it's going to be quite a challenge. But don't be scared, because at this point, you have developed all the crucial skills that you need in order to survive in the real world. Remember that life is not determined by what you achieve, but how you survive. And like I said, it won't be easy, but it will be doable. My last advice tonight is for you to find your inner strength, find your voice, expand your horizons, try new things, and always remember where you came from. But most importantly, always remember where you're going. Remember that in the world of design, collaboration is crucial, and therefore, you have to keep an open mind and be willing to give everyone a chance, because one day, someone will give you a chance. It's been an honor for me to see all of your evolutions. I'll be looking forward to see what's next for you. Thank you for allowing me to share this special moment with you. Thank you to the faculty for giving me the opportunity to learn, to mature throughout this journey. Thank you to my family for their support, unconditional love, and for always believing in me. Now, graduates, remember that this is the beginning of the, of the rest of your life. Take care of yourself. And with that being said, may the fears be with every single one of you. Thank you.
Thank you, Lauren, Juan, and Ivan. College of Design alumni are key partners for the college. Actively involved in their professions, they serve to advise, advocate, and connect students and faculty to learning opportunities in public and private settings. They also provide critical expertise and perspectives that keep our discovery, invention, teaching, and engaged scholarship relevant. In the College of Design, our alumni and student leaders work together to advance these important connections. I am pleased to introduce alumnus Mandy Mills, president of the College of the Design Student and Alumni Board. Congratulations, graduates. My name is Mandy Mills, and I am the president of the College of Design Alumni Board. And I'm here to let you know that when you earn your degree, you also earn a place in our community of over 15,000 design alumni worldwide. Now, you might have a job lined up after you graduate, or you are still preparing for that next step. And that's OK. Just remember, no matter what happens, always follow your own path. Take risks and develop the skills that only you uniquely possess. And as you progress through your career in design, know that every experience, every skill honed, leads you towards the jobs and roles that you were always meant to have. I know my career path is not what I expected, but I'm exactly where I meant to be. And know that there's always support. In fact, there are so many ways to tap into the alumni community and stay connected after graduation. Whether you want to share and celebrate career news, make connections with other design professionals, continue your education, find inspiration, or get involved as a volunteer, we can help. We hope you'll tap into this amazing network of design alumni as you prepare for your career, a move to another city, or look to stay connected to the U, the college, and each other in the years to come. As you cross the stage, you will receive a small gift from the Design Alumni Board, along with more information to help you get started on your lifelong connection to the College of Design and the University of Minnesota. Congratulations, grads. Hello. Uh, uh, my name is Trevor Miller. I'm the Assistant Dean for Strategy and Advancement. And I'm happy to be here today to take part in celebrating your achievements. Each year, a number of our undergraduates are distinguished by their significant academic achievement and program participation. In your program, you will see that these students have been identified with the notation behind their names. Students who have completed the University Honors Program are recognized with the Latin Honors designators cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude. These students are wearing their University of Minnesota Honors medallions this afternoon. Students who have maintained a superior grade point average are recognized with distinction wearing gold cords or high distinction wearing maroon and gold cords. These students have demonstrated outstanding scholarship as undergraduates of the University of Minnesota. Students wearing purple commencement cords has, have successfully completed the President's Emerging Scholars Program. You will note that students graduating from a master's program will be wearing the hoods from their respective disciplines. We will be hooding the PhD graduates as a finale. Please note we have professional photographers taking photos of every graduate as they cross the stage. Students will be contacted in the coming weeks about the option of purchasing photos Students, uh, we are giving you a diploma cover today. Your real diploma will arrive after grades are posted and your degree is official. <laughs> We're sort of crossing T's, dot and I's before we. Um, the graduates are presented by academic program. They will be announcing their own names as they take the stage. Please hold your applause until the end of each program where whoops, whistles, and individual cheers are expected and encouraged. All right, coming to the center stage to congratulate the Apparel Design Bachelor of Science students is Program Director Lucy Dunn. Caroline Albers. Ellen Becker. Emily Dufault. Alexis Fry. Candidate for distinction. 
Ivan Gill. Sarah Ramsey. Madeline Rooney. Haley Strobel. Madison Young. Your graduates of the Apparel Design Program. And moving on to graduates of the Bachelor of Design and Architecture program, coming to center stage to congratulate the Bachelor of Design and Architecture students is Program Director Gail Alint. Sutat Amponasuk. Amanda Benke. Brock Berge. Ari Bible. Sean Bouton Keith. Emmett Breen. Jasmine County. Brennan Alexander Daly. Colton Danks. Jocelyn Dugan. David Arturo Enrique Michel. Jake Pfeiffer. Gina Frenet. Joey Gorgon. Jack Grunmeyer. Haley Haverman. Gabrielle Hansen. Blake Envy, President's Emerging Scholar. Alden Jokola. Candidate for Distinction. Cody Johansson. Sasha Karlausha. Kanta Kikubo. Claire Kim. Michelle Conan. Jack Kumo. Our great Krantz. Megan Kress. Kaylee Kriegel. Alexandra Marguerite Liapis. Austin Lind. Hunter Lutz. Curtis Mactimus. Jacob Mala. Jesus Martinez Ramirez. Thomas Matthews. Liam Madison. Ethan Miller. Legion Olson. Araya Orr. Julie Panic. Pranav Patel. Maya Peterson. Rachel Riddle. Candidate for high distinction, Rachel is also completing the Bachelor of Science in Retail Merchandising. <laughs> Abel Santos Meeker. 
Jacob Schoenig. Lali Abdisa Shabari. Grant Simons. Jacob Scraba. Evan Super. Mimi Vo. Chu Feng Wang. Parker Watson. Candidate for distinction. Catherine Wheeler. Braxton Weebush. Jing Yuan Yao. Tian Yu Jai. Congratulations, graduates of the Bachelor of Design and Architecture program. Uh, Gala will keep you on center stage as we bring forward the Architecture Bachelor of Science students. <laughs> Nathan Anderson. Kyle Bolster. Michaela Bolin. Min Ho Choi. Trevor Desato. Benjamin Dosh. Nate Ehrlich. Jared Eichberger. Brittany Fadul. Leyland Farias. With distinction. Thomas Fox. Dennis Garvey. Zi Shi Han. Nicholas Hess. Josh Himes. Rebecca Isnardi. Jared Johnson. Victoria Kern. Gabrielle Lullaberti. Joshua Miners. Andrew Mercier. Kelly Mork. Banning Muha. Ian Nelson Fox. Kelvin Rogers. Austin Rudine. Hannah Seifala. Adam Schelberg. Drew Tangren. William Charles Townsley. Luke Walsh. Sean Christopher Whitney, the second. Luke Walsh is a candidate for summa cum laude. Belinda Zhang. Joshua Yuan. Congratulations, graduates of the Architecture Bachelor of Science program.
Moving to graphic design, the program director, Su Chu, will be congratulating the students. These students are earning a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Josie Adkins. Candidate for distinction. Jusan An. Candidate for distinction. Michaela Armstrong. Candidate for distinction. Jessica Austin. Cum laude. Alexandra Bausch. Raquel Benedict. Candidate for distinction. Ashley Bernhardt. Candidate for distinction and summa cum laude. Sorry. Emma Bercy. Caitlin Bremer. Magna cum laude. Abby Brokaw. Candidate for distinction and summa cum laude. Brianne Christian. <laughs> Rebecca Clemens. <laughs> Sarah Corner. <laughs> Leah Dahlgren. <laughs> Madison Demise. Candidate for distinction and summa cum laude. Kristen Dulge. Benjamin Eggleston. Nicole Fowen. <laughs> Lindsay Freitag. <laughs> Megan Galloway. Candidate for distinction. Amanda Giordano. <laughs> Savannah Goman. Cum laude. Guan Hui Huang. Emily Habiger. Taryn Halterman. Samantha Hebel. Candidate for distinction. Broderick Howard. Kayla Jamber. Meg Jensen. Woo! Annie Judd. Yeah! Saurabh Gatil. President's Emerging Scholar. Mihi Kim. <laughs> Samantha King. McKenna Kleiner. Summa cum laude. Elaine Kalaya. Blue Kraus. <laughs> Caitlin Krebsbach. <laughs> Taylor Kreck. Ellie Crummel. Christiana Larson. Candidate for high distinction. Gia Tia Lee. Sean Mo Long. Anna McKenna. Samira Mesfin. Rachel Moore. Jennifer Moss. Candidate for distinction and summa cum laude. Catherine Muto. Yim Liu. Jake Nicholas. Yeah. Emily Nyhart. With distinction. Young Par. Kristen Paulson. 
Tessa Portuese. Candidate for distinction, summa cum laude. Catherine Roan. President's emerging scholar. Jenna Richardson. Candidate for distinction. Victoria Roberts. Candidate for high distinction and summa cum laude. Jonathan Marcus, Christian Silhouette. Cameron Smith. Candidate for distinction. Megan Smith. Candidate for distinction. Andrea Sorensen. Kelsey Specht. Lizzie Stanky. Candidate for distinction. Abby Steiger. Becca Steinman. Francine Thompson. Candidate for distinction. Nick Teat. Alexandria Alvey. <laughs> Elizabeth Walber. <laughs> Wang Man. <laughs> Shannon Urich. Candidate for distinction. Congratulations, graduates of the Graphic Design uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts program. <laughs> Next up, interior design. Uh, coming to center stage to, con to congratulate the students in the program is, is program director Tasula Hajiani. Becca Barsky. Carly Basara. Claire Brundle. President's Emerging Scholar. Tai Chen. Grace Duraney. Noah Exum. Candidate for Distinction. Sophia Hartman. President's Emerging Scholar. Sarah Jocks. Olivia Jones. Michaela Kopcho. Sarah Copen. Heidi Ludolf. Abigail Lundstrom. Woo! May McKinley. Win-win. Ave Paschke. Kyla Schulte. Rachel Springman. Emily Walther. Aspen Ward. Brian Walters. Congratulations, graduates of the Interior Design Bachelor of Science program. Uh, next up, uh, Landscape Design and, and Planning Bachelor of Environmental Design Program. Congratulating the graduates are Department Head Joe Favor and Program Director Brad Agee. Lauren Arndt. Blake Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren 
Lauren Arndt is a candidate for distinction and summa cum laude. Anna Bride. Candidate for high distinction and president's emerging scholar. Sean Cochran. Ruby Davis. David Heading. Candidate for Distinction, recipient of the Outstanding College of Design Undergraduate Award. Alyssa Hornick. Lauren Hundley. <laughs> Rachel McNamara. Seth Newhouse. Chad Reed. Blake Sweaty. Trevor Stewart. Colin Winberg. President's Emerging Scholar. Keone Wong. Zhao Yun Lu. Congratulations, graduates of the Landscape Design and Planning Bachelor of Environmental Design program. <laughs> Next, we move to the Product Design Bachelor of Science program. Uh, come to center stage to congratulate the, the graduates, our program directors, Barry Cutterwitz and Hassan Nadiri. Davis Anderson. Cassandra Connery. Woo! Lauren Emily Dantes. Yeah! Sam Gardner. Woo! Stevie Ring. Woo! Candidate for distinction. Audrey San Diego. Harrison Schaffhauser. Woo! Madison Schmidt. Woo! Anna Yoshimura Sinclair. Yeah! Congratulations, graduates of the Product Design Bachelor of Science program. Next, the Retail Merchandising Bachelor of Science graduates. Congratulating the graduates of the Retail Program is Program Director Hae Young Kim. Carson Albrecht. <laughs> Alexis Arnason. <laughs> Ashlyn Beeler. Lauren Behrens. Riley Bankston. Emily Bourne. Madeline Brown. Brianne Cathy. Joseph Camille. Sarah Conway. Lauren Deming. Tessa Dorso. Candidate for distinction. Allison Falcon. Candidate for distinction. Megan Felt. Olivia Fowett. With distinction. 
Maggie Foster. Molly Franzinelli. Marissa Fronberger. Candidate for distinction. Natalie Gunnick. Megan Hammersmith. Caitlin Hockert. Celia Hoffman. Claire Honerman. Vanessa Johnson. Candidate for distinction. Kate Jorgensen. Candidate for distinction. Sarah Kastenmeyer. Yeah. Megan Petula. Yeah. Courtney King. Yeah. Francis Kolars. Yeah. Jason Lamore. Marissa Lestrilla. <laughs> Ellen Litwin. <laughs> Mai Kai Chi. <laughs> Lindy Martinson. <laughs> Keiko McMaster. President's Emerging Scholar. Mary Jo Meehan. President's Emerging Scholar. Cassidy Miller. Kira Miller. Lexi Minor. President's Emerging Scholar. Sydney Monsoor. Shakira Nelson. <laughs> Shelby Nyman. <laughs> Abby Olson. <laughs> Caroline Orwall. <laughs> Elizabeth Pagel. <laughs> Abigail Pedersen. President's Emerging Scholar. Mariah Peterson. <laughs> Duba Kasser. <laughs> Lauren Resnick. <laughs> Taylor Robarge. <laughs> Dan Azam Sombri. Emma Sharp. Emily Sherman. Candidate for distinction. Severine Strand. Sunny Taunton. Jordan Vanden Langenberg. Melissa Vanslow. Cassidy Lynn Wall. Hassan Ursame. Courtney Wiegert. Candidate for distinction. Ali Windham. Monica Young. Alexa Zastro. Candidate for distinction. Yi Meng Zhang. Ah! <laughs> <You're> good. <laughs> uh, let's hear it for our retail students and all of our students earning bachelor's degrees.
Now on to students earning graduate degrees in the School of Architecture, Department of Landscape Architecture, and the Department of Design, Housing, and Apparel. First up, we have students from the School of Architecture representing the school to congratulate the graduates once again uh, is Gayla Lint. Receiving the Masters of Architecture degrees are... Leslie Adrians. Samuel Brissett. Jesse. <laughs> Marco Aid Tadros. <laughs> Mona El Taha. Recipient of the Richard Morrill Final Project Award. Isabella Finney. <laughs> Zane Gale. Bradley Githens. Alexander Greenwood. Joseph Krasinski. Gu Tianwei. Cozy Hanula. Neva Hubbard. Recipient of the George G. Gorbatenko Junior Award. Julia Irwin. Trevor Isaacson. Honorable mention for the Thomas F. Ellerby Scholarship. Ali Carlin. Recipient of the Richard Morrill Final Project Award, the KKE Ron Crank Vision Award, the George G. Garbatenko Junior Award, and the Sullivan Family Fellowship. Daniel Alvin Killen. Trevor Kennard. Brian Mortimer. Mauricio Ochoa Rosales. Margaret Pendergast. Anthony Rabiola. Matthew Ryan. Timothy Shortread. Recipient of the Richard Morrill Final Project Award. Andrew Smith. Tyler Snell. Recipient of the Thomas F. Ellerby Scholarship and the Student Choice Final Project Award. Sin Swinson. Virginia Tyson. Tyler Boyd. Austin Watanabe. Honorable mention for the Thomas F. Ellerby Scholarship. Yuan Zheyang. Brandon Zemer. Congrats to our MR grads. <laughs> now to the re receive the Master of Science in Architecture. Ziu Huang, Xin Chào Vietnam. Sheldon Merrill. Maria Alexandrovna Petrova, Spasiba. Mona Shanbab. Okay. 
congratulations to our MS in architecture graduates. Next are the graduate degrees in design. Uh, Director of Graduate Studies for the Design Programs is Hun Ju In. First, our graduate for the Design Master of Fine Arts is? Ryan Wickendall. Next, we have two graduates of the Master of Science in Design. Naz Bilgic. Michelle Longworth. Congrats to those design graduates. <laughs> Moving on to the Master of Science in Human Factors, representing the Human Factors program is Brad Holsha. Simon Osbeck. Congratulations to our Human Factors grad. <laughs> the next graduates crossing the stage will be from the Master of Heritage Studies and Public History program. Coming to center stage to congratulate the students is Director of Graduate Studies for the program, Greg D'Onofrio. Noah Barth. Alyssa Gregory. Alyssa! Casey Lucini Butcher. Hey, Denise Pike. Yeah. Rob Skalecki. Congratulations to our Master of Heritage Studies in Public History graduate. <laughs> Next, we have the candidates for the Master of Landscape Architecture. Coming back to center stage is Department Head Joe Faber and Director of Graduate Studies for the MLA program, John Kepke. Nicholas John Pat Hartball. Recipient of the MLA Capstone Award. Shauna Berg. Recipient of the Asla Merit Award. Alexandra Bays. Recipient of the Asla Honor Award. Sarah Clausen. Maxwell Dixon. Daniela Duque Quevedo. Jacob Halsney. Recipient of the Asla Merit Award. Danielle Jurichko. Yeah, Danielle! Anna Jersik. Olivia Lister. Recipient of the MLA Capstone Award. Miranda Olson. Norman Chester Palacios, Jr. Sun Yen. Aubrey Tyler. Recipient of the Asla Honor Award. Zoe Weingarten. Recipient of the MLA Capstone Award. <laughs> Maximilian Wilhelm II. <laughs> Cameron Zuck.
congratulations to our Master of Landscape Architecture candidates. And now we take pleasure in presenting those students who have earned the highest degree granted by the University of Minnesota, the PhD Doctor of Philosophy. I will call each student to the stage and introduce the faculty member who will be hooding them. First are the design PhD students. Suyan Bay. Hooded by Evan Bola Asojo. Lorene Berlin Gibson. Yeah. Hooded by Marilyn DeLong. Dong Yun Choi. Hooded by Brad Hokinson. Kurt Lund. Hooded by Marilyn DeLong. And now our Human Factors PhD candidates. Brian Fitch. Hooded by Marilyn DeLong. Shui Shan Lee. Hooded by Thomas Stoffergan. Theodore Malik Russell. Put it by Barry Cutterworth. And now a round of applause for our newly minted PhDs and a round of applause for all of our students earning, earning degrees today. Congratulations. Thank you, Trevor, for guiding our students through their academic programs along with faculty and other members of administration, and also for helping to guide them toward this commencement of their lives and careers. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. Could I ask that the audience please remain seated until the degrees have been conferred and the faculty and students have completed their exit procession. Then, please join us for a reception in the atrium and on Northrop Plaza. Here to confer the students' degrees is Regent David J. McMillan, the former executive of Minnesota Power, where he served in a variety of roles from 1989 to 2018. 
He received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and History from the University of Minnesota Duluth and a law degree from the University of Minnesota. Regent McMillan currently serves as chair of the St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation Advisory Board. Previously, he served as the board chair of the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, the Natural Resources Research Institute, the Area Partnership for Economic Expansion, and Goodwill Industrial Vocational Enterprises. Active in his community, he is a past board member of the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center's Board of Directors and the Board of Directors of St. Luke's Hospital. Regent McMillan. Well, thank you very much, Dean Stroherker, for that, uh, that uh, generous introduction. And uh, on behalf of my 11 colleagues on the, uh, the Board of Regents, I bring a, a heartfelt and sincere congratulations to, uh, to all of you. We get to do some amazing things as, uh, as regents, and uh, I don't think anything, though, better embodies the opportunity and the realization of what it is a research university does, because what we really do is we create and share knowledge, and what we're doing today is recognizing that process, and it's all about you. We're deeply grateful that you chose Minnesota, and uh, we certainly hope that uh, you'll be back from time to time. So let's uh, do what we came to do right now, and uh, will, the, will the graduates please stand? All right, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the regents, I now confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified. Graduates, please remain standing. Thank you, Regent McMillan. Graduates, would you please turn around and give your family and friends a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you very much for being here today, and congratulations. Family and friends, let's hear it for the College of Design Class of 2019.